To most people, perhaps, miracles are a manifestation of spiritual forces. But by way of vision, a miracle is any feat or occurrence so unusual as to seem miraculous. A wonderful thing, a marvel. Our lives are filled with miracles, and so many are they that in this land of ours, miracles have become commonplace. The miracles of nature are all around us, in rocks hewn through centuries by wind and rain, in cascading cataracts run from caverns below, in the awesome beauty of a canyon, in the majesty of a thundering waterfall. These wonders of natural phenomena were here before us, in three centuries of occupation upon this continent, what has man accomplished to match their being? He has written words simple in themselves, but whose wondrous meaning shaped the miracles of nature into a nation. And more, forged the dignity of man's individual freedom, thereby creating a nation which in due process of its inspired heritage has become a land of everyday miracles. But in the beginning, man-made miracles were born of necessity as the early colonials started their new lives with little more than raw courage in their hands. Shelter, clothing, and food were ever-present problems that daily confronted the pioneer family. And news of the young country had spread around the world. Immigrants were swarming to our shores, seeking a haven of shelter and a rebirth of hope. This fusion of diverse races religions and creeds was a mighty force of purpose inspired by a determination to live in peace and to prosper under the blessings of liberty. But a lesson always before us had been learned in other lands. Since the beginning of man, hunger and ever-present famine had been accepted conditions among a large percentage of the peoples of the world full of the challenge. In America, it's increasingly evident that to remain strong, we must grow things an expanding nation could eat. To the west, there were millions of miles of uncharted wilderness, unmarked by wheel or plow. It would be a miracle indeed if the valleys and the plains and the desert could produce an abundance for the ever-expanding migration to the shores of America. Staunch hearts and strong arms made steady inroads into the sea, the impregnable wilderness. As the land was so painstakingly cleared, the earth was turned and precious seeds entrusted to the care of the virgin soil. To these pioneer families, the first meager harvest was a thankful and blessed miracle. For the staff of life was literally earned by the sweat of their brows. will be done. Give us this day our daily bread. And yes, the us. early families of America learned that much of the land was fertile, not and the rewards of their labors were security and abundance. Power. Thus they settled farther and farther from the centers of population. But other sections of the fast-growing nation would have to depend on the new farmers for produce. And we were beginning to realize that this was indeed a big country of great distances. Thus came about the early miracles of transportation. The lumbering Conestoga wagons carried freight and food and assorted articles of daily use halfway across the nation. Rivers and canals became highways of commerce. A miracle of its day was the Pony Express, which carried the United States mail in a fast and often dangerous fashion. And wonder of wonders was the great iron horse chugging and puffing and grinding wheels heralded a new era that lessened the distance between farms and cities and welded the daily lives of all our citizens more closely together. And the ingenuity of people nurtured in freedom began to contribute other miracles to the development of the country. Charles Newbold patented the iron plow which lengthened the furrows across the plains and the prairies. Eli Whitney, and with the seeds mechanically removed from the cotton fiber, new horizons were opened to the planters of the South. And Cyrus McCormick, a blacksmith's son, 
invented a reaping machine which would one day cut paths of plenty through seas of grain. And Samuel Morse developed the first practical telegraph and the words clicked like magic through strands of wire. Passing almost without notice at the time was the discovery of a rich mineral beneath the earth when Colonel Drake drilled a well in Pennsylvania. But a miracle that is today as commonplace as the rising sun occurred in Boston when a man conceived the idea of transmitting the human voice by electrical waves. Mr. Watson, come in here. I want you. These words of Alexander Graham Bell marked the invention of the telephone. Mr. Bell, I heard every word you said distinctly. And about the same time, another man who had been to school only three months in his entire life announced from his laboratory in Menlo Park, New Jersey, that he could now reproduce the human voice from a cylinder made largely of wax. Soon after, Thomas Alva Edison perfected the incandescent lamp, and the age of light was to come to cities, and villages, and farms. Let's take a look at America in the few years before the turn of the century. The gasoline-driven automobile made its appearance. And these documentary pictures reveal an historic moment on the bleak sand dunes of Kitty Hawk, when the Wright brothers launched their plane into flight. When the gay 90s burst upon us, we adjudged this nation to be a land of abundant plenty. It was a time of bicycles built for more than two, of good fellowship and good food. But a disturbing contrast had appeared in this land, now populated from shore to shore and border to border. In a nation of ever-growing abundance, there was a hidden hunger. Strange that people who had food to eat were starving. But there were newer and greater miracles to come. Paradoxically enough, their beginning was not within the confines of our shores, but across the sea, where a French girl brought into unrealized yet practical application the invisible world that lay beneath the lens of his microscope. And again, on the opposite side of the globe, the island of Java, where a Dutch physician named Eichmann contributed to a miracle that was another link in a chain of events which accumulatively were to bring about a miracle closely akin to life itself. You will notice, Anna, my experiment is now proven correct. When the chickens eat the brown rice, they remain healthy. But when the chickens eat the white rice, they are sick. Some of them are dead. Then it is something that they eat that makes them sick. No. No, it is something they don't eat. Some mysterious element lacking in the food was necessary to sustain life. That is what Eichmann began to realize. Some years later, that specific life-giving substance was isolated and identified. Dr. Casimir Funk was the first to give the mysterious food elements a name. Vida means life, and the word amine is a chemical term. I will call it vitamin. But the problem was to isolate, identify, and reproduce it synthetically so that substantial amounts could be manufactured for the greatest use and benefit. It was an American chemist, Robert Williams, who achieved this goal in Columbia University after 30 years of research, inspired by Dr. Edward Bright Vedder. But how do you know that synthetic B1 is the same as natural vitamins? By feeding it to animals and pigeons. The reaction is identical. Well, aren't there plenty of vitamins in what we eat? There would be if they weren't largely milled out of grains or boiled out of vegetables. You see, we hope to put vitamins back in the food. At first, it was difficult for us to realize the magnitude of William's contribution. But the lesson was before us. In some sections of our country where there was food in abundance, malnutrition had settled among the people like a plague. For more than a century, in wide, productive areas, the land itself was slowly dying. Our farmers had planted the same crops. The health of the populace had suffered with the sameness of diet. At last, a expansion, a miracle of scientific planning, 
as well as long hours of toil for the farmer. The story of soil conservation is a great victory against the unrelenting force of nature, whose rain and winds had for centuries dissipated the land. Irrigation reclaimed vast arid areas to fertility as the dammed up waters from snow-crested peaks were released to the thirsty earth. Early miracles of the plow and of the threshing machine had left an impressive legacy in the shape of ingenious and efficient machines that widened the scope of man's endeavor and made the farmer one of the biggest businessmen in the country. The grain, once so prayerfully planted, had become a rich golden carpet over the endless plains. And so we enter a modern age with modern miracles. say, even in these amazing 20th century times, what constitutes a miracle? Is it the millions of automobiles that fill our streets with traffic? The miracle was as profound when the horseless carriage first chugged up the street. Is it the sleek streamliner streaking westward a hundred miles an hour? The Pony Express was an equal miracle in its day. But the modern airplane has pierced the wall of sound, traveling faster than sound itself. And yet who can say it is a greater miracle than the cumbersome wings that first lifted man skyward? And do you remember the pioneer woman in the crude log cabin? She would be amazed to know that the staff of life is today enriched by the miracle of vitamins. While the milk we drink is protected by the miracle of pasteurization, Yes, in those two words, enriched and pasteurization, we find the sources of two of the most helpful and healthful miracles in our everyday lives. Miracles that can be traced back through the years to the discoveries of Louis Pasteur, father of fermentology and pasteurization. The inspiration of his research still burns brightly in America. The story of enrichment, which really had its beginning at Columbia University, where Dr. Williams finally isolated vitamin B1, came into full being in our nation's capital. The daily paper brings news of all the world. Washing machines. Typewriters. The radio. Motion pictures. Miracles undreamed of by the pioneer Americans are everyday events in our lives. And has the ingenuity of man surpassed the miracles that were awaiting us when our country was a virgin wilderness? It is certain that no modern day miracle can be likened to the inspired principle which our nation was founded. Then the truth is self-evident. It is the heritage of freedom and free enterprise that has made possible the continuing miracle. We have kept faith with our forefathers. We worship as we please. We speak as we please. We have freedom from want. We are the best fed, the healthiest nation of people on the earth. Cognizant of our past blessings, we dedicate ourselves to the church, to America the beautiful, America the bountiful, the America we love. Land of everyday miracles. I love every inch of her prairie land. Each stone on her mountain side. I love every drop of the water clear that flows in her rivers wide. I love every tree every blade of grass within Columbia's gate. 